Hey guys, what's going on? This is the new arithmetic here, and this is going to be a tutorial on a simple collisions within libgdx. Uh, I might say simple collisions, but these are definitely not simple. This is not simple code. It's it's a it's a tiny bit more advanced. You know, we're gonna start using some more concepts, uh, including some mathematical and visual thinking. Um, and you will know you will have to know previous concepts of libgdx, such as delta time, um, drawing a sprite, and just those kind of things. So right here, I have the finished product of what I was testing. Um, hold on, let me pause this. I have to get a phone call from. All right, sorry about that. That was awkward and unprofessional. Um, anyways, like I was saying, this is the finished product that we want to go for. I have an arrow that's going to start all the way here on the left side. It's going to shoot out all the way over here and it's going to hit this wall. We want to make sure that when it hits this wall, it stops. Uh, collision detection, that's the whole goal here. So let's go ahead and run this just to just so I can show you what I'm going for. Um, let's run this. There's our arrow. And boom, it stopped perfectly right when it hit the wall. And that's exactly what we want to go for with the collision theory. And I'm hoping we can get this done in one episode. It's, I think it's going to take two because it's a little bit of complex theory. So I have this all this code here for that. Um, I'm going to delete what we don't know yet. So I'm going to delete that. Um, going to delete that. Really, there's not. Oh, there's really not that much I'm deleting. Most of this we already know, so it shouldn't be too hard. Okay, okay, so we already know how to do this. Um, this is what we're going to have left, where it's going to run, and it's just going to go right by it. And there we go. It just it just didn't even know it was there. Go home, Arrow, you're drunk. Um, so let me go over what we have right now and how we made that. If you're confused on that, please go ahead and look at some of my previous videos so that you can understand a theory such as drawing a sprite, um, drawing uh, or using an orthographic camera or delta time. It's it's all going to be explained in previous videos. But anyways, I'm going to go and give a quick a quick um quick overview here. So when we want to draw something, we always have a camera and a batch, and then we have the sprites. Uh, I have a sprite wall and a sprite arrow. Uh, obviously, the sprite wall is just going to be the red wall that's on the side, and the sprite arrow is the the arrow, the arrow itself. So you might remember x position. This is the value that's going to change um, with the delta time. So this is the x position of the arrow. It starts out at negative 40, and then we're going to have it move about 20, 20 meters per second. I kind of like that value, so we'll just go with that. But it starts at negative 40, and this is just the starting value that we initiated it at. Um, so in the create method, we're going to create the camera. Um, again, as I like to do it, 100 and 100. Batch, you can do sprite batch. Sprite wall equals just that file right there. Sprite arrow, same thing, same concept. And then we get to the sprite wall, and we're setting the size. Because originally, I might have set it as, I think I set it as like 16 by 258. So I don't want that kind of size, so I just set it here. Um, let, me, let me just go ahead and show you how that... Yeah, no, that's that's the arrow. That's not what we want. Um, we do want that later, though. No, I don't want Internet Explorer. No. Okay. There's the wall. So this is the whole wall right here. Uh, I think I drew this wall in 16 by 256. Uh, I don't want to use that. I want to really set my own kind of preferences to the size. And that's 5 by 100. And then we set the position, which is 40, negative 50. Um, you might be wondering why negative 50. And the reason for that is that the origin um, is at the bottom left corner of that rectangle. So that's why negative 50. So it's going to go all the way from negative 50 to positive 50 because the whole length is 50. And then 40 just just because of 40. You know, it's not right at the end, but it's close to the end so that we can see the arrow actually moving. Now we have the sprite arrow and we set the size. I set the size to 16 and 14. Um, 
you want to make sure uh, that you have it in the same ratio as your original picture. So the original picture is something like this. I have this ratio in 512, I have 128, and that's going to be 4 to 1. So I kept it in a 4 to 1 ratio, and you want to see why later. Um, okay, now X position, we said already negative 40, that's called in the uncreate. And then here we have delta time, I just have a separate delta time, we clear this, actually this should be below, just out of convention. Speaking of convention, I did have a question earlier why we set these to private. Um, there is really no big reason why we do it here within the tutorials. You don't need private, for sure, for sure. Um, I just do it out of habit, practice safe coding, and it's just convention when you're making variables that you only want to use in that class. So that hopefully that answers the question. And then to continue that, uh, this just washes, I guess you could say, or clears the whole screen in white because it's 111. This is delta time. Um, I always have to call batch dot sub projection matrix. Let me clean this up a bit, and then we set the exposition to an updated value. So we want the arrow moving at 20 meters per second to the right, and this just does that. This sets the arrow to that position, and then we just draw that. So that's going to cover everything. Now that we covered what we have here, let me just show that again because it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. No, it's not beautiful, but it is helpful. Um, the arrow is just moving to the right, and it's completely missing the wall. So how can we circumvent that problem and fix it? Well, one simple way of doing that, um, and the reason I say simple is just because in theory it, it's, it's very easy, and even in coding it isn't too bad once you know what you're doing. So for example, we have this arrow here. Well, the theory or the simple detection method goes kind of like this you make a tiny, 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 tiny rectangle right at the tip or wherever you want to detect a collision. So you can have three arrow, uh, three rectangles, one right here, one here, one here, and maybe, you know, even add some more over here. You have these tiny, tiny rectangles here, and let me just draw one just for the hell of it. Uh, let's draw it in yellow so that we can actually see it. And let me increase this. Okay. So, okay. We're going to have a tiny tiny rectangle right there and then we're gonna have another tiny 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 well actually no 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 we're not gonna have another tiny rectangle we're gonna have a, another big rectangle on the wall so we have this tiny rectangle and then you have the whole rectangle covering the wall because obviously the wall is a rectangle itself so we can cover the whole thing easily and then what we say is when this rectangle overlaps the rectangle on the wall then we've got a collision, which which we do. So let me go ahead and pull up a, f a picture of that wall again. So imagine with this wall that we have a rectangle drawn right over it. And that's not a rectangle. Um, and I do have two screens for those of you wondering how I'm pulling these images over. It makes it makes making these videos a ton easier. So, anyways, um, imagine a rectangle over this whole wall, and then whenever each of these rectangles overlap, then you've got a collision because you indeed do have a collision right there. So that's what we've what we are going to be doing. We're going to be creating two rectangles, and we're going to be calling a method ca called um, what a, uh, dot overlaps dot overlaps. Yes. So. Making this rectangle is going to be really easy. Uh, it doesn't even move or anything, so we just create that rectangle once, and boom, we're done. However, uh, don't say. However, making this rectangle is going to be a little bit more difficult, and the reason I say that is because it's a moving object and it's a super tiny rectangle. So let's begin. What we're going to do is kind of find out which, where, where we need to draw that rectangle. Um, if you can remember, in libgdx, we set it to 16, 14, so 16, 4, 16, 4, 16 of width and 4 of a height. So 
what I did is I hovered right over the tip and if you look right at the bottom left of paint it gives you a number that's like 503.57 right now it's 501.57 I went ahead and went with 503.57 this number right here and then I made that a proportion out of the whole image which is 512 by 128 and I made that a whole proportion so if I can just bring the calculator over here um, so what I did is I took 503 divided by 512 and I got this value oh, it's 98 percent of the way there so I multiplied that by our width that we were using in libgdx that's what's important 15.71875 and that's the number I got here um, I did the same thing for your y value and that's 1.78125 um, right so that's that's your point uh, that's your arrow point within libgdx so now that we know which where the point is in libgdx we can start to make a tiny 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 rectangle at this point so here's the rectangle that I made in my head that's the dimension. So your bottom left is 15.7 and your well and your y value is 1.78 whereas your top right is just going to be that same that same um value we found 15.71875 and just a little bit higher by 0 0.002. So it's a very tiny point uh, rectangle on that arrow as you can tell. So these are the numbers that I came up with that we're going to use for that rectangle. So we'll, let's go ahead and start coding a little bit. Um, don't save. What we've got to do first is create a rectangle. So private rectangle and rectangle rect arrow. That's, yeah. Um, <laughs> rectangle arrow and what I've done um, here let me take this out just so I can show you when you import it uh, control shift O it's gonna ask you which one of these do you want to import and go ahead and take the one that's from com.badgelogic.gdx.math it just gives you different methods that you could use basically um, and then we're obviously going to need the other one later, which is private uh, private rectangle rectangle wall that works. Um, rectangle wall is only going to be created one time, so we can go ahead and do that in the create method. Let's do that right here, and we're going to say rectangle wall. Uh, is equal to new rectangle and let's go ahead and use this one your X is going to be the X of your wall you know uh, so we can do sprite wall dot get X uh, not that get Z okay and your Y is sprite wall dot get Y your width is sprite wall Again, spray wall dot get width, and I'm sticking with this because that way you know for sure that your measurements are accurate. Um, spray wall dot get height. Okay, so that's what we have so far. We have the rectangle being drawn over the wall. Uh, what we've got to do in the next tutorial is we have to go ahead and make the rectangle, the tiny rectangle on the point of the arrow and then we have to set a method saying if the two collide, I mean if the two overlap then we've got a collision on our hands and let's do something to stop it. Um, and that's all uh, That's all we have for this tutorial. Um, I'm going to finish this in part two so stay tuned and thank you.